Hello all productive people out there, this is Kevin from Stacey Pipe where we focus on productivity and pipeline for creatives and I'm here to bring you another InDesign tutorial and my most popular upload on this channel is the import from Word to InDesign tutorial. So I thought I'd do a follow-up video showing the same for Microsoft Excel. And if you didn't already know, instead of just copying and pasting from Excel or Word, we can choose to import into InDesign and when you import from Excel you get the option to bring it in as a table or as a tab text and you can also create a live link to the Excel file to make it more updatable. And um, this is great if you want to make an InDesign table from an Excel spreadsheet. You get it as an InDesign table automatically and you can also import with formatting and uh, however if you do want to import tab text there's still the advantage of getting a linked spreadsheet that you can update with uh, some caveats to it. All right, let's get into it. For this, we need a spreadsheet and I have one here. Now, how it looks over here won't really matter much. So let's just close this and jump over to InDesign. And uh, first things first, let's enable the live linking. And for that, we press Control K and uh, go to File Handling. And over here, there is a checkbox that we need to enable. This one right here, create links when placing text and spreadsheet files. And if you don't want a live link, you can obviously just skip this part. And also note that this setting is document specific. Moving on, here is where I want to place my list and I'll show you this using both tabbed lists and tables. And uh, we can start with the tabbed lists, which I find very hard to say for some reason, and uh, which are the most straightforward. And uh, by the way, something I did notice doing this, a small tip, try and import the list with the correct paragraph style already selected because it will apply that to what you import. And if you have to update the link, it will seemingly revert to that one. So I just make sure I have my style list selected up here. Next to import, we press Control D for place and we find our file. Then very important, check the show import options box down here and then we open. And note that you can't have the spreadsheet open when doing this and uh, we can select the desired sheet. I only have one. And then the cell range, this will end on F10. So I'll fix that real quick. There we go. Now we need to choose how to format. And if you choose a formatted table, it will bring in formatting from Excel, but that isn't what we want. We want to format in InDesign, of course. So let's skip that one and try the unformatted tabbed text first. Just press okay and drag it out. And this now looks pretty much the same as if we had simply copied and pasted this instead. And I obviously already have set up my styles and I do have one for the table header as well, which I'll apply real quick. And uh, however, if we now open our Excel file and uh, change something, just a second, um, maybe I'll just add a uh, smiley face here. And uh, then we need to save and close this once again. Next, we go back to InDesign and then the links panel. We now see that there is one modified link and uh, double click to update it. And it will give us a warning that edits have been made and that they will be lost. And this is the caveat I mentioned. And if we press OK now, it will remove the changes we did to the header, but it updated our field here with the smiley face. So that's one way of doing this. And uh, by the way, if you no longer want the live linking, simply right click on it in the links panel and choose unlink. OK, let's look at using tables and tables in InDesign can be a bit finicky in my opinion, but sometimes it just is the better tool for the job. And just as with paragraphs, there are table styles and this we will use to bring in a formatted table that we can also update. And now this isn't a video about table styles, so I won't get into it that much, but in case you're not at all familiar, let's quickly look at how it works. And if you already know all this, you can just use the shafters to jump ahead. To begin, let's find the panels and uh, we will find them under window and styles and then table styles and cell styles as well. Next, we create a table style and uh, this is kind of your global settings and uh, cell styles are your local. And for the table style I made beforehand, I did the following. I removed the table border, which is here. And uh, then under fills, I added an alternating pattern to every other row like so. And uh, lastly, under general, I started setting up cell styles and these you will need to bring in the table fully formatted. 
So why not make one for body and under body rows I'll choose new cell style which will give me yet another dialog. Like I mentioned here we make more local formatting. First I'll choose which paragraph style to be used and list will be fine. Next I added some cell spacing under the next tab over here, right here with the cell inset. And uh, lastly I wanted to remove all borders since we have alternating line fills already. And uh, that we do under strokes and fills. And you make sure you select the sides you want to be affected. And uh, then I'm just going to choose color and none. And that's all I did. Then I added a style for the header and one for the left column to be applied as well. All right, let's import this table. We do the same as last time, control plus D. And remember the import options. And uh, we need a span to be A1 to F10. There we go. And uh, this time we choose unformatted table. And unformatted meaning it brings in an unformatted table that we then apply formatting to by choosing our table style here. Great, now we just place it. However, for some reason, I don't know why InDesign doesn't want to give me my header cell style automatically, even though I got the left column style, but I'll just add it now. Um, there we go. And uh, maybe along with uh, some adjusting the spacing as well. Just give me a second. I just want to fit this in here. There. And the cool thing now is that if we update the link this time, it should retain these adjustments. Let's open the Excel. Just one moment. Then I'll type something else in here. And uh, I don't know what, something. Then we save and close. We jump back to InDesign and uh, back to the links panel. And then we double click on the warning sign once again, we get another dialog. But this time it tells us we won't lose edits made using table and cell styles. So we are all good. And there we see our change brought in and the table stayed the same. All right, that's all I had for this time. Admittedly, I haven't used this feature a whole lot and I'm sure you'll run into more trouble with bigger and more complex spreadsheets. However, hopefully this can still be very helpful for you when presented with spreadsheets that you need to make pretty in InDesign. Thank you so much for watching and uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It helps me out a lot. And also if you have any productivity questions or suggestions for future videos, make sure to throw those in the comments below. Once again, thank you and until next time, have a good one.